It's a busy time in Hollywood. Movie studios are pushing those Oscar-nominated films at the box office as well as preparing to take indie flicks onto the big screen. Fresh off his Sundance adventure, Eric Childress, vice president of the Chicago Film Critics Association, back to talk about the winners and losers among the <laughs> indies. Welcome back. Thank you. So what did you think of Sundance? One film that caught my mm -hmm. eye was Arbitrage. It's yeah. about hedge funds and it's similar to Margin Call. Yeah, it's a, I mean, a big uh, cast, Richard Gere, Susan Sarandon, a lot of people in it. Uh, I saw 29 movies at Sundance and this one just happened to not uh, fit into my schedule, but I heard good buzz about it. Uh, it did get picked up at the festival, so I'm sure we'll be seeing it later this year. And the film that you liked the most out of Sundance this year? Uh, my favorite was a film called West of Memphis. It's actually a documentary about uh, the West Memphis Three uh, that Peter Jackson produced, kind of independent from the Paradise Lost documentaries that have documented this, uh, this sort of infamous case. Um, that was my favorite film of the festival. And let's talk about the Oscar bump at yes. the box office. Mm -hmm. The artist, as predicted, did make some money over the weekend. Yeah, well, they finally, they, the Weinstein Company is expanding the movie as they custom to do when they get a bunch of Oscar nominations. We're going to see this roll out a little bit further throughout the next three weeks uh, coming up to the Oscars, and you'll probably start to see it crack the top ten finally. And the artist going from 13 million to 17 million, while mm -hmm. the Descendants went from 52 million to 59. Yeah, five Oscar nominations for the Descendants cracked the top ten uh, again, so it's up to about 60 million dollars right now, and it's probably going to continue. And let's take a look at those numbers from the box office overall last weekend. The Gray coming in the winner Yay. at 19 million dollars. Mm -hmm. You liked it. Very much. Underworld Awakening, you no, don't like it so much, no. it's $12 million. No. One for the money at $11 million. Red Tails, I finally saw it, I loved it. You did. $10 million. <laughs> well, George, yeah, I know, George Lucas, will he get his yeah. money back? You know, it's, it's historic, it's a first all-black cast. Yeah, but I mean, I think you can go back and see the HBO treatment, the Tuskegee Airmen from a few years ago ah. with Lawrence Fishburne, I think is a much better treatment of that story. Uh, Lucas, I mean, he's a passion project for him, a personal project. He spent over 20 years trying to get this film made put up a lot of his own money to do it. Uh, it's probably only going to come in around maybe $50 million. Uh, it hasn't opened overseas yet, so we'll see if it actually cuts a profit. But it did a little better than people thought it was going it's to. It's very Disney-esque. I say take the family. <laughs> There's a few naughty words. That's it. Man on a Ledge came in at $8 million. This week in the, the box office, big miracle. Chronicle, mm -hmm. The Woman in Black. What do you like? Well, you got Big Miracle, which is probably trying to grab some of that Dolphin Tail money from last September. It's a family movie about whales. Not getting quite as big a launch as Dolphin Tail, so probably not going to do as well. Uh, the Woman in Black is, is sort of an old-fashioned haunted house movie. Last year, Insidious and did fairly well, and then Don't Be Afraid of the Dark, not so well. So I'm not expecting big numbers from this. But Chronicle, which is another one of these found footage movies, like we just, a couple of weeks ago we had The Devil Inside, and this one's a very short movie. It's only 78 minutes long. It has to deal with kids who develop superpowers. It's actually quite a really excellent piece of work, and I think it could do a, some really big money this weekend and could surprise a lot of people. Eric Childress, Vice President of the Chicago Film Critics Association. Always a pleasure, Eric. Thank you.